Hello guys and welcome to my first video about transient heat transfer. Um, here we will be going over important concepts that define um, heat transfer where there is also a time dependency. Um, we'll be go we will be going over three important definitions which are the thermal diffusivity, the BO number and the Fourier number which are quantities that allow us to simplify some problems and um, will allow us to know when to use the lump capacitance approximation which I am sure you learned in class. Okay so the first quantity we'll be talking about is the thermal diffusivity and it is known as the ratio of the thermal conductivity and the volumetric heat capacity. So the thermal conductivity is a transport property that measures the amount of energy that will flow with a given temperature gradient. It tells you how quickly or how much energy will flow per time, right? And the thermal and the volumetric heat capacity tells you how much energy your system will absorb or will be will be stored before its temperature rises. And so let's see what the units of this quantity are. So the units for the uh, for the conductivity are watts per meter per Kelvin or per temperature difference and the units for the volumetric heat capacity while the units for the density are kilogram per meter cubed and the volumetrics uh, the the units for the heat capacity because this is per mass um, is going to be joules per Kelvin oh per kilogram per Kelvin so it's the amount of energy that you need before uh, that you need per unit mass before you raise the temperature of your system by one Kelvin and so we cancel out the kelvins, we cancel out the kilograms, we cancel out the meter squared, well the meter with the the meter cubed, and we also cancel the joules in the watts, leaving us with one per second, and we cancel the joule here. So overall we end up with meter squared per second. Okay, and so as I said before, uh, the thermal diffusivity measures the ability of a material to conduct via conduction uh, to conduct energy, thermal energy, relative to its ability to store thermal energy. And so systems or materials with a high thermal diffusivity will respond quickly to thermal changes within the material, whereas materials with a low thermal diffusivity will respond uh, more slowly or sluggishly. Okay, so to illustrate this concept, I thought about a plain wall. Imagine heat was flowing through this plain wall from the right to the left, and so we had a conduction, a steady state conduction profile. So it's going to be a line because we wouldn't have any generation. Straight line. And so imagine that, okay, this was the profile at time equals zero. And imagine that at this same time, your walls became adiabatic. So they become adiabatic and that causes the system to want to approach a new equilibrium state and the new equilibrium state will be at the centroid of this temperature profile okay that's too high One second, probably around there it might not be the actual centroid but imagine it is okay let's call it TC that's our new um, equilibrium system and so what tells you how quickly or, so, or how slowly your system or your material will reach this new temperature or this new equilibrium system is the thermal diffusivity because the only means of heat transfer here are conduction and the quantity that determines how much energy per unit time is transferred um, given a thermal gradient is the conductivity and the quantity that tells you how much energy will be absorbed before your temperature changes is the heat capacity. Okay, so now about the BO number. The BO number is basically a comparison between the two modes of heat transfer, conduction and convection. As you can see from the formula, it is expressed as the ratio of the conduction and convection resistances. Here we're doing resistances per unit area because the areas are the same, the cross-sectional areas are the same, so they would get cancelled out. And um, a way of looking at this um, at this value uh, could be done by uh, performing a surface energy balance. So imagine here we had another plane wall, and we had the two modes of heat transfer. So we 
had conduction and convection with the surrounding air. So imagine this was the surrounding air and say T infinity was somewhere here, it was higher. Say the temperature of your um, solid, of the surface of the solid was somewhere here and say the temperature of the unexposed surface was say here. This was a cooler, say a cooler um, cooler side or a cooler, cooler fluid on this side or something like that and so imagine it looked the temperature profile looked something like this okay so <clears throat> basically the VO number comes from the flux balance um, at this surface so let's do a flux balance at this point convection or conduction is equal to convection and so the conduction heat transfer is just basically the conductivity minus K times the temperature gradient and the temperature gradient in this case would be say call this T1 T2 let's call this length L L starting from here so it would be T2 minus T1 divided by L and that would be equal to H times T2 minus T infinity times the area, but the areas are equal, so this is a flux balance. And then if we rearrange, if we rearrange, we end up we can we can flip the sign here to get rid of the negative sign, and we can rearrange to have H over K over L, which is the BO number. And on this side, we would have T2 minus T1 divided by T infinity minus T2. And this is all equal to the BO number. So as you can see here, another way of expressing the BO number is basically as the temperature drop in your system, in your uh, material, within your material, relative to the temperature drop of your material surface with the surrounding air. So in this case, from this picture, we can see that the BO number has to be slightly high because the temperature drop within the solid is larger than the temperature drop between the surface and the solids uh, than the surrounding fluid. So because of this, the, um, the BO number should be larger than 1, right? Um, so what would happen if the opposite were true? If the BO number, say, was lower, was small, I'm going to draw it with... Uh, blue, light blue, cyan, and if our temperature drop is much lower than the temperature drop between the solid, between the surface and the fluid, we would have something like this. This would be T1. And for this case we said that B, the BO number would be really small. So as you can see here, our the temperature drop within the solid is much smaller than the temperature drop between the, sur the surface and the surrounding fluid. This means that we can, that when the BO number is very small, we can approximate the solid to be to have a constant temperature, and that's where the uh, so the lump capacitance approximation comes from. The lump capacitance approximation says that we can neglect any conduction effects or any temperature drop within our solid when the BO number is lower than 0.1. So BO number less than 0.1 neglect conduction effects so because of this because this greatly simplifies your problem you should always at the beginning calculate the BO number however if you have say a different shape I'm gonna draw it here as you know a random geometry and you happen to know the volume the volume and the surface area and it has it's a weird weird geometry you know the surface area you can calculate the length the an analogous length to the this plane um, to the length in this plane wall by calculating the characteristic length of this shape which is defined as the ratio between the volume and the surface area in your um, materials engineering course this is called the modulus and what you end up doing 
is that you do a um, a you take your whole geometry as a differential control volume and then you only take into account the convection um, heat rates because you're assuming that within your system your temperature is constant and so the BO number is called also the characteristic BO number the subscript C and it actually uses it actually uses the characteristic length and so the characteristic length is only used in the lump capacitance approximation problems whenever in any other case when you have conduction effects you must calculate the BO number in the normal way so the characteristic length is only used for the lump capacitance approximation I hope you remember this because it'll be uh, it'll be really important when you're solving some of the problems All right. another remark is that you must not um, confuse this quantity with the nusselt number so the nusselt number basically has the same form but it applies to fluids only in this case the bio, the bio number is only for solids so it's not equal bio number not equal to nusselt number this one is fluids this one is solids so the last quantity that we'll be talking about is the dimensionless quantity the Fourier number it is generally referred to as a dimensionless time because it includes a time term here so dimensionless time and generally well the reasoning behind this this quantity is uh, it's not it's not very clear it's kind of an abstract quantity but the way that I look at it is um, by taking into account that the diffusivity is sort of like a velocity term it tells you how quickly the temperature will change in your solid because of conduction and then when you multiply that speed or that velocity times the time well you actually get how much your temperature has changed um, over that time right and then when you divide it by the length squared you're actually including the geometry aspect to it so if the length squared is very high if the characteristic length is very big that means that you have a large volume to surface area and that would mean that the temperature in your system hasn't changed by much relative to its initial um, to its initial profile because it will naturally take longer for the for the effect to be dispersed over the whole uh, material um, and so that's kind of the reasoning behind it. Um, I'm going to write it down as measures the amount that the temperature has changed after or relative. Okay. Okay, so we reached the end of the video. We were able to define the thermal diffusivity and the dimensionless quantities BO number and Fourier number. And we were also able to learn when, to, when and how to use the lump capacitance approximation, which um, used as a criterion the BO number. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.